Oh, hello. I'm back again for another playthrough of a licensed video game uh, in this series I'm currently covering uh, based on the Young Indiana Jones TV series. Uh, that is a TV series from the early 90s, early, like, 90 to, 90 to 94, uh, based on showing the adventures of Indiana Jones as a kid and as a teenager. So, uh, and it was really, uh, it was more of a historical entertainment show, like, edutainment <laughs> TV series. Like, it was meant to... Because uh, almost every episode, or I think every episode, is young Indiana Jones meeting a famous historical figure and learning a lesson from them. So it was kind of built around teaching kids and young adults you know, history stuff. Uh, but, and the the early episodes, you know, kid Indiana Jones uh, are really focused on that because you can't have a kid running around, you know, shooting people and wielding a whip and everything that the older Indiana Jones does. But then t teenager Indiana Jones, he does fight in the Mexican Revolution. He goes to World War One and fights. Uh, he goes to Africa as part of that as well and becomes a spy and all these things happen. Um, so it is an interesting TV series and it's worth checking out for anyone who wants to find it. Uh, you can see above there, I have above and here actually, right? I, I had to buy them all to play these games that I'm about to get into. But, but yeah, they're on DVD. But if you want to find them all on YouTube, just search Young Indiana Jones complete or full episodes or whatever and you'll you'll find uh, what you're looking for uh, and actually they'll be different because the the ones uh, on YouTube someone painstakingly pieced together the broadcast versions of the episodes where they preserve these uh, these scenes with old man Indiana Jones and he always was the framing device of telling a story right so in young old Indiana Jones would would show up at the beginning of the episode, he'd, he'd say, I remember back in the day, and then they would go back and actually show the full episode, with, uh, and then they would cut back to Old Man Indiana Jones to wrap things up. But So those are not on the DVDs, if you're interested in, in that. But anyway, yeah, so the DVDs got released in 2007 and 2008, uh, and someone decided, you know, we're going to have these DVDs with, with discs in them, why don't we have a bonus disc that has the usual bonus content, like behind the scenes and, you know, deleted scenes and stuff, but then they also thought, let's add some video games in there to teach kids more stuff. Uh, and these, because um, you know, there were two proper video games while the TV series was on the air, the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles for NES and Instruments of Chaos starring Young Indiana Jones for the Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive. Um, and, those, and that was it. So at the time when the TV series was more in the public consciousness, I guess, that was the only two video games you got. But then later for these DVD series, like I said, they decided to throw in some PC games as well. And that's what these are. So each DVD set uh, released separately, like um, there were gaps between each one. Uh, so each one got its own game. Uh, volume 1, which is the first one I'm going to be playing, is called Revolution. And it's, uh, Volume 1 is, uh, is the w set that features Indiana Jones, young Indiana Jones in Mexico. And he fights in the Mexican Revolution, and that's what this is. So, uh, yeah, that's... I think that's really all the setup we need. We can talk about the rest as we go. So yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, these, all of these games were Flash-based uh, executables. So th they are games you have to install on Windows. That's what I did here. But they're built in Flash. And you can tell immediately, yes, this is a very, very Flash, Flash game. <laughs> Look at all that vector art. You can e instantly tell... Um, and it's weird because some people have nostalgia for this, like I do. I remember the era of Flash and so many, you know, so many, so many websites and games you'd find online were based on vector art, and that's what this is. Um, and that's what helped, makes the game look as good as it does in terms of the resolution of the art, right? Because it was all it's all vector, and vector, for those who don't know, is um, it was popular because it's a smaller file size. Because you're not just drawing a 2D image and importing it into your game or into your application, you're you are tr you're drawing a vector image and vector it's all math based, but basically a vector image just scales very well. Like it retains its sharpness even if you scale it up, like I have done here. Uh, and yeah, it looks in terms of the resolution anyway, it looks pretty good. Some of the choices of the illustrators, especially around Indiana Jones. Uh, well, all the characters have have weird faces. Uh, I'll just say that. So get used to that as we go along. But um, yeah, let's start. Oh, you can see here I've already uh, started a few games, but I'm going to make a new one here. Uh, we're going to call this one Uno because this is the game from Volume 1.
Spring break is supposed to be two weeks of freedom. But spending two weeks in the desert with my cousin and dad sounds about as much fun as sitting through class watching the clock. But then it hit me. The border is just a short journey away. And crossing into Mexico means a lot of fun without a lot of rules. When it comes to adventure, what more could a kid on spring break ask for? So yeah, that's the wild thing about young Indiana Jones when he, when he, in his teenage years uh, and World War I uh, is that he's still in high school. He's maybe 17 years old when he decides to make a break from Mexico and then Europe. Uh, he basically leaves his dad in the States for like a year, doesn't talk to him, doesn't send a letter or anything. He just disappears, which is, uh, I, I don't know, maybe at the time it was a little more typical, but yeah, yeah, that's pretty extreme. So just keep that in mind as we go through all these events. Like, this is a 17-year-old doing all this. Yeah, it all looks real good. What did you boys plan to do today? Hmm, not much. Maybe just go swimming. Good idea. Mom, we were thinking, Andy and me, of maybe going on a little camping trip this weekend. Camping trip? What sort of camping trip? Well, nothing special. As far as Red Butte, maybe? Red Butte's a fair distance. We'll only be away a couple of days. And and we'll be sure and be careful. Yeah, the faces are most noticeable. Look out for yourself, Junior. And remember, back by Sunday. Yeah, like the faces on their own, like the illustrations are okay. But then it's during those transitions when they cut from like a video clip to what how they chose to design the face for the for the game that it gets like, ooh, a little noticeable. Oh, but yeah, here we get into the first type of gameplay, uh, which is really is dialogue. It's a whole lot of dialogue sequences where you're just talking to somebody, uh, and it's through the dialogue sequences that you get asked a bunch of questions and have to refer to the guidebook, but we'll get to that shortly. You ready? I know of a ride we can catch, but it leaves in 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, let's go. Glad you remembered your compass. Hey, do you know who invented them? So yeah, the dialogue is both to advance the story, but also to do to cover or to um, to provide the edutainment gameplay that these games I think are really meant to be focused on. So characters you talk to will just ask you a, a question of historical relevance, right? So yeah, uh, I guess the objective is to get an indie card, but really that um, which is optional. But the idea is to learn something. I think that was the, why they made these games because that's what the TV series is really focused on is teaching. Uh, viewers a little something so so here we're being asked about who invented the compass and that's when you have to open this guidebook and find a relevant article to to help answer the question let's go to the article about the compass and here we go it is believed the Chinese first developed the compass as a form of fortune telling so Chinese you sure know your history well we better hurry if we don't want to miss our ride let's go uh, and then another aspect of gameplay, and really, really the other core aspect is survival. It's a lot like um, maybe Oregon Trail in that you're supposed to stock up on supplies you need for these long journeys. And if you run out of supplies, Indiana Jones dies. You, you'll just be in the middle of a journey and you'll just get a sudden prompt that tells you, oh, Indiana Jones is dead, you failed. Uh, and there are checkpoints. But sometimes you can get into a really bad state with a checkpoint where you just didn't have enough supplies as of that checkpoint and you're always going to fail on the journey so you have to restart. Which is a weirdly difficult part of the game that you can just fail and have to restart it. Um, so in that sense, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real game. They, they made it challenging enough. Here we're just going to take all the supplies we can get. Not all of the supplies are critical either. Here's, here you see an example of the sort of journeying part of the game where it's just a picture of a map and, you know, a line showing the characters making their way through. Uh, but yeah, not all the items will be essential, uh, but everything can be traded, uh, which will run into some people to trade with along the way. So, like, so here, for example, you could choose to drop your burritos, though why would you? <laughs> uh, but no, the burritos are actually food, so you want to keep food... Food and water are the most essential things. And then the next level down in terms of, in terms of importance is the healing herbs and medical kit because you run into some dangers along the way. Uh, fishing pole, you, you get to fish every once in a while, but maybe not as critical, but 
Let's go in the store and see what's up. Howdy. How can I help you? We need some stuff. So water. Water's... Uh, I mean, food and water are both important, but what food you can get from other sources, right? Because you, here you can buy daily food rations, but you can find other food, such as the burritos, the rice, the beans, etc. So here you can see I already have a lot of food, um, I did, but I had no water. In fact, I'm just going to go for four water supply because I really need to make sure to have enough. Oh, but there's something else. You have a maximum of 14 items. Let's see what we have. We have 10, that's, sorry, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 13 items, 13 things total, so I can buy one more thing. Howdy, how can I help you? So because I can buy one more item, I will choose to buy the medical kit? Maybe food. I'm trying to think of all the stuff you run. I'll, I'll, I'll buy one more food ration. And that's it. That's 14. Uh, other things to look at here, you can look at your location with the compass. You can, what do you looked in the backpack? We looked in the guidebook. Uh, there's a lot to read, but we'll run, we'll run into the, you know, they'll make you read a lot of this along the way. So we'll go back to this. The money you currently have. And finally, health. Because Indiana Jones will take damage during various encounters and along the journeys. Uh, and he basically has five points of health, as you can see here, and you can refill health with by eating food. So, food has multiple uses. All right, let's go. All right, so first we're gonna Good catch a ride. You boys caught a ride. This is rattlesnake country after all. Do you know which rattlesnake is one of the most dangerous? All right. The little shaking guidebook indicates, go, go look it up. So let's go read about rattlesnakes. What are the dangerous ones? They include the dusty, dusky rattlesnake and the Guerrero pygmy. So here we go, Guerrero pygmy. Hey, <laughs> looks like we've got a snake lover. Hopefully you won't be beating too many of those on the trail. Luckily we don't see them much in these parts. They're found farther down in Southern Mexico. So, it's interesting. So again, these DVD sets released in 2007 and 2008. So that's what that that's when these games were were made available. For a standalone PC game of, of this sort, well, I don't know. I, I guess you have all kinds of players. So maybe, never mind. Like there was an audience for this for sure, right? Maybe, if it wasn't, maybe it wasn't like hardcore players who are trying to play first-person shooters. But somebody, in, including me right now was interested enough to play these games. All right, so we caught a lift with this guy and we continue. Hey, look, isn't that an aspen tree? I heard the leaves are good for something. Do you know what? Random, but all right, let's look up aspen trees. I think I saw that, here we go. Aspen leaves are good for uh, fear, anxiety, nightmares, apprehension. Hmm, maybe we should take some with us. Do you have room in your medical kit? I don't think I do. Say, you studied Latin, so you might know. What does the name Mexico come from? Mexico, uh, let's look up the country of Mexico. The name comes from uh, Mexitilli, which means place of Mexitilli. All right, place of Mexitilli. War god, huh? The place of Mexitilli's people. Well, it won't be long now till we meet them. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. We have a, here we have our first branching path. So the car broke down. So we can either choose to walk or we can choose to try and catch a ride. I will choose to catch a ride. Yeah, this first PC game revolution, the, the journey parts are much slower. They, they, speed, they speed up these segments where you're just waiting for a line to follow the path um, in the later games. But in this one, it's, it's kind of on the slow side. Uh, overheated. I have water. Yeah, let's do it. 
Oh, another branch. Two different paths, watering hole, or the dangerous shorter route. I mean, that's pretty odd. A watering hole. Which I guess is slower, but uh, I will take water for sure. Hey, look. Damn, three dollars. Uh, let's go fishing. Hey, we caught a fish. Let's fill up with water. Oh, we're out of space. That's fine. Water is pretty inexpensive uh, to purchase from the from the you know from the shops. So slow. I wonder if this is accurate. If you look at a border area New Mexico map, if, if these mountain ranges are all all the same there. Alright, so now what? So they've arrived in a border town. Alright, here's our first town segments. Uh, not, not the store yet. What else do we have? Casino. I'll show you this. Because I just, we have so much money. Someone thought it would be educational to teach kids about blackjack and how to play it. So let's, let's play a quick game. Ooh. Hey, look at that. I got, I got 50 cents. Now we're going to leave. Because, uh, it, well, like any form of gambling, it's very easy to get caught up thinking like, oh, one more time, one more time. And I, I think I, one time I did get stuck like that and I lost almost all my money. So let's not stick around. Yeah, look at that. It's a stranger. Kitchen's not open yet, boys. But the coffee's hot and bitter, just the way I like it. Coffee's hot and bitter, just like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's another impressive aspect of the game. Or a, an impressive aspect is they got voice actors. Right? You meet, you meet a lot of characters along the way, and they are all fully voiced. They didn't have to do that, and they did, so I appreciate that. Well, nobody's keeping you, are they? Have a seat. You boys aren't from these parts, are you? What's good to eat here? Most folks order huevos rancheros. Me, I get the steak and eggs. Or the fried rattlesnake and grits if they have it. Fr rattlesnake must be real gamey, I, f I feel like. All that wild caught uh, bush meat or whatever you call it, I feel like it's always really gamey and tough. Uh, but maybe good, I don't know. Home is a long way from here. It's better that way. Word has it there might be trouble in Columbus. And where there's trouble, there's dinero. There's dinero. Dinero. I reckon some left town after the Mexican Revolution began, but most stayed. And stayed scared, probably. It's still early, and if you're a bird looking for a worm, well, there's no time like the present. I think that's it, right? We said all the things? Yeah. Before you go, say a man needs compadres in this part of the country. Do you two know who the Mexican revolutionists have been fighting? Oh, here we go. Time to learn. So, something about the revolution. Who have they been fighting? Alright, so here we learn about the attack in Columbus. Which the game doesn't say it, it calls it border town, but that's where we are now. We're in Columbus, New Mexico, on the border. Uh, I think they fought the U.S. Yeah, yeah, it was the, it was the U.S. cavalry versus uh, Pancho Villa's crew, so I'm going to say U.S. Smart kid. That's what I heard, too. Some say Villa and his rebel fighters are heroes. Others say they're bloodthirsty murderers. Only history will tell. And maybe not even them. Uh, let's trade. Oh, except I, th I think I'm full. Plus, what does he have? I mean, he... I, I have all this stuff already. I, I don't need anything. So we're going to say no. Oh, wait. I blew it. Let me see if I can trade again. Kitchen's not open yet. Kitchen's not open. I reckon some... Oh, I blew it. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. I could have traded an item for an item and I wouldn't have been over my item limit. Because, like, the reading materials, I, d I don't need that. And the stool, I could have gotten rid of that for an extra water supply, which I'd need anyway, see? Yeah, that, that's the thing. You, you gotta pay attention to what you have 
at all times. Especially when you're dealing with trading, because sometimes you really need to be mindful of that. All right, so we went to the cafe, talked to the hot and bitter man. What else is there? I think that's it, I, right? I hit the casino and that, that was fine. And now we're going to go to the store to buy... What, wait, wait how, much, how much stuff do I have? One, two, it's five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen point two five. So I don't even have that much space. I need to get rid of stuff. Which I really should have traded. I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to drop because I need water, like real bad. I, I, I can tell that immediately. How much food do I have too? I have a duck, burritos. I have three food. All right, I need at least one water, so let's get that. Hello there, son. I hear you're going on a long trip. Just let me know what you need. What do you got? All right, let's buy one water. And that's it. That will sustain us through the next leg of the journey, I think. Yeah, let's get out of here. Somewhere. There it is. You boys steer clear of old Max, is you here? He's liable to give you any. Oh, snap. Blood. Yeah, that's a pretty notable aspect of the show. Uh, it is. Both the violent, the violence content and the sexual content of the TV series uh, is surprisingly m mature. I guess I would say it's like a teen rating. But again, this is like an educational show that I would have figured would be for kids as well as older teenagers. But yeah, there's some like the violence, especially in the war part. The war episodes are pretty. It's pretty gruesome, and there's a few bits where like Indiana Jones is just. I don't know, he's courting like Mata Hari and sleeping with her and but in, it's not in these games, but it is in the TV series. So, so uh, maybe that makes it more enticing for anyone who thinks this is just for kids. Well, look at that. Pancho Villa and his crew rolled into the bank, into Columbus, and they're stealing stuff. Including dresses from a poor lady. So here's an interesting thing. Uh, in the TV show, he always... This is from the TV show. He always pursues the bandits to retrieve the dresses. I've never selected forget it and go home. I'm going to do it. Bandits leave with everything. Huh. So now they're, they, they're trying to hitch a ride back. The bandits return. And they shot his cousin? Whoa. That is intense. And this doesn't happen in the TV show. Because again, in the show, he always ch pursues them on the horse. And the cousin just gets left behind in Columbus. You never see him again. So, the f wow. This is, this is wild. So, in the canon of the games, uh, Indy's cousin is now dead. Or shot. No me oyeron. Voy a perder clases. Gringo, en unos minutos más vas a perder mucho más que las clases. Estoy casado, tengo niños. Ay, no me maten, por favor. If I don't get home, my father's gonna kill me. I gotta get back to school. Deténganse. Deténganse. Be careful. Yeah, some of these portraits really do no favors to the original actors. Like, like they, they, in the illustration, he just they give him this ridiculous giant mustache. Uh, and he just, I don't know. I, I think they certainly took artistic, uh, artistic license with their interpretations of the actors. So here we meet Pancho Villa. Uh, and there's a whole lot about him, which is also back, it's going to be in the guidebook anyway. 
Uh, the only interesting thing is his original name was Doroteo Arango Arambola. Um, and later he just, when his boss got killed, he took his boss's name and became Pancho Villa. So, uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of interesting stuff, but that's all I'm going to pause for here. If you want to kill them, you're going to have to kill me first, buddy. Well, what are you waiting for? So he saves Indy's life. And we're rolling the... Running low on water in the middle of this conversation? What? And now we got General Pershing coming after them. Somebody's shot. And he's, and Indy's decision is like, alright, I'm going to take up arms against the U.S. Army. Why not? So this is one of, um, I guess, one of m several types of minigames kind of that pop up throughout the journeys. Uh, the shooting gallery. You can see there. You can pop up and shoot them and take cover. So here we're waiting for to see who's going to pop up so we can shoot them. I think it's oh, it's the airplane and it's this guy, right? Yeah, in this game they're not they have bad aim. Like these uh, shooting challenges get a lot more tough in the later games, but here in the Mexican Revolution portion of the, uh, they, they're not that tough. Like, like in the other ones, you have to take cover immediately or, or you will be shot. Like, there's, there's no option there. But with these guys, you can kind of, you can hang out, they won't, they won't get you. Alright, we're trying to shoot this guy in the airplane, who I don't think is even shooting. Oh, okay, I hit him. more. Uh, here there's just one of them. That was it. And then here we have someone telling us, that was brave. I knew you were a brave man. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to sound French because this guy, well, he's, not, he's Belgian, but you know, he speaks Belgian French. And now Indy gets hauled off to be with the vents. Let me think. So the short route, we're running low on water, I believe, is what is what the message said. The short route's going to be more dangerous, but it'll preserve resources. The long route's going to take longer, and it'll just burn through more resources. I'm going to take the short route in, in the hopes that it is actually shorter to do it that way. More shooting, okay. Alright, how many do we have? We have four. And my strategy with these guys, with these sequences, is usually to just um, linger over one of them and kill them. Like, just take as many shots as you can each time. Ooh, I actually got hit. Uh, yeah, just take as many shots as you can uh, to take them out as soon as possible. Versus taking a shot and taking cover, because it just takes longer that way. Right, who's up? Oh, that's two hits. I cannot take another hit. Well, that's not true. There, there's no... The only penalty for these sequences if you fail is you have lower health. Like, there's no game over state from, from any of this. Yeah, I, I guess all that's really happening here is I'm, I'm losing health. And like I said, uh, ultimately, this is a game of survival during the journey segments. You're, you're just trying to make it to the end of the... Like, survive a journey, get to the next town so you can restock on supplies. All right, there's a fork in the path ahead. Which path will you take? So the hilly terrain versus the desert. Uh, I think the hilly terrain will be more dangerous. Let's go desert route. My camera blurry. Hold on a sec. Uh, no, it's the same. Oh well. More. Wow. I've never had this much money in any of my playthroughs of these games. We're loaded. 
Wow, that is such a long journey until the next destination. All right, I take a hit. Let's use the medical kit. Because, again, it's not, it's not shown, but right now you're losing water, you're losing food, and your health is... My health's probably pretty low. So I have to be real careful. Let's take the water for sure. All right, two more paths. And again, I think the mountain route will, will be a shooting sequence, which I don't want to deal with. So let's go this way. Desert route will just use up more of your water and food. Oh, Poncho's camp. So, all right, we've arrived here. And, uh, oh. Dinamita. Y eso, la mitad por la munición. ¿Cuándo podemos recogerla? Por la mañana, mande a unos hombres a mi casa. Ah, y también necesito rifles y pistolas. Eso le va a costar, General Vía. Yo creo que como unos 10 mil. 10 mil. Mil por adelantado. Y el resto te lo pago con tú me entregues a mí lo que te he pedido. Que algo te molesta, Clon. Usted no tiene esa cantidad de dinero, mi general. ¿Cómo se que va a volver a pagar? Porque te doy mi palabra. Tendrá las armas en tres semanas. En dos semanas. And then back to ridiculous portrait. Do you know what that means? Imshi. Nobody said Imshi in this conversation. This is always a weird one for me, like, nobody said that. But, it's, a tr it's another trivia question, so we can find it somewhere. Here we go. Imshi means go now. So, it means hurry up. Right. And this guy's like, uh oh. And now off they go to Guerrero City, where the Federales just shipped 50,000 pesos in gold. And they're going to blow it up and take it. Before that, though, we're in the camp. So, there's no shop here. It's kind of critical here. So, you, everyone you talk to will want to trade. And you just have to make sure to take advantage of the trades to get some good stuff. So what do I have? I have actually a surprising amount of water. Which food, though? One. Two. Two food. Two food. 2.75 water. So I feel like if I can get, if I can get one more food, two, no, two more food, one more water, I'll be in a good place. So just keep that in mind. Two more food, one more water. And I have a lot of money, but I can't spend any of it here. That's, that's the weird part. No, there's no shop in this, t in this camp, so you can gamble if you want. Sure. Uh, I'll stay there. And there you go. We, we won more money that we can't spend. So let's let's take it take it and go. Here's now, a rando. Do you understand why we are slaves in our own land? President Carantha and his rich friends have taken everything from us. Our children starve. When we get sick, we have nowhere to go. They've sold half our land to you, gringos. Wait, why is the guidebook tingling? What, do, what am I supposed to do? What do? Or what am I supposed to answer? Do you understand why we, we are slaves in our own land? No, I don't think this is a trivia question. What else can we do but fight for justice? Okay. Do you know the word ejito? Ah, there we go. That I can find. Ejido is a type of um, land redistribution deal where the government owns the land, but people get to farm it. So it is a communal land shared by the people. Now you are beginning to see. Long ago, ejito was common practice by the Aztecs. The land was shared by the people and everyone had enough to eat. The U.S. backs Carranza because they know he is too weak to stand up to them. It is up to us to take back Mexico. Do it. Here. 
take my Derringer pistol. Go on. Do you know who carries this type of gun? Derringer, let's see. It is ideal we an ideal weapon for gamblers whim and women. So, card sharks? Yes, and do you know why? It can fire two 41 caliber rounds in a single close range shot. I never had to use it, but I always kept it close to my chest. You've lived a charmed life, Gringo. But it is now better for you to have it. Do I want to trade now? Uh, I, I guess so. So, I'm going to offer something useless like a wooden stool. And what, what did I say I should get? Two food, one water? Hmm. Oh, and I did have to use a medical kit before, didn't I? And the medical kits are very expensive. Actually, for now, I'll take the food. So let's go. Alright, that's it for him. Do you know when the Americans launched their first ever air combat mission? <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe if we read about planes, we'll know. During the Mexican Revolution, the A-1 Triad plane was used to spy on Pancho Villa. So, now? Yes. And Pershing is using them to spy on me. But I'd send some men to hide under an American flag where we knew they would fly over on patrol. The pilot landed thinking it was an American unit. And now we got one to spy on them. <laughs> uh, that's dope. They stole a plane from the Americans? I, I didn't know that before. Oh, what? I didn't want to make the dialogue go away. I was just trying to eat some food because I noticed I am low on health. Actually, yeah, if I if I do replenish my health now, I have no food left, right? I have one food, so I need to just buy two more food or trade for more food. Uh, what kind of food do you offer, buddy? Daily food rations? Yes. All right, we have one more trading opportunity. How, many, how much more space do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven point five, eight point five, nine point five. Lots of space. To a bon chance, mon ami. You are very lucky. He must be feeling sentimental today. Yeah, so this is Remy. He's uh, a pretty important character in the TV series because he becomes. This is where he and Indy meet, and he. Uh, he's, he's kind of there for most of it. He, he and Indy go on these adventures together and he becomes his, basically, basically his best friend during this whole, uh, young Indiana Jones series, so. Uh, but yeah, this is where it starts. So he meets this Belgian in Mexico. Alright. General Francisco Poncho Villa. You're in the company of the man who is going to liberate Mexico. Are you French? You speak French? Formidable. My name is Remy, but I'm Belgian, not French. Yes, it seems strange to be half a world away from home, but we as men are fighting a good fight, and I have my own reasons for joining them. Okay. And so, you are American. Via has had many in our ranks, fighting side by side, brothers in arms. But everything is different now that the U.S. betrayed Via and backed his rival, Carantha. Do you know who is chasing us now? Thinking they will punish and capture Via? That's so weird. The Carantha. That's like a that's like a Spanish uh like Spain dialect thing. To pronounce a S sound with like a th th anyway. Uh a little extra education here before we answer this question about um who's chasing them now? The hunts for Pancho Villa. Who's after them? General Pershing, it looks like. Yeah. Correct. The moment I saw you, I knew you were a lucky kid. Uh, and again, if you answer those questions correctly, every time you do, you get one of these cards. And I already have ten of them. And I believe if you get ten or more, you get some bonus content at the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, you get these. You get a card for each correct answer, and then. Each one has little details about oh, that that question. She's a beauty, no? 
Do you know why the Mauser rifle was so important in the Spanish-American War? Uh, let's read all about it. It was the first to use the new smokeless gunpowder. Yes, my friend. Without smoke, it is harder for your enemy to know where to file back, especially if you are well hidden. All right, so let's trade before we go. Uh, what do I have? Do I have anything that's useless? Maybe the fishing pole. Again, what do I need? I need, I need food? Let me see. One, two. I have two food. And no medical kit. Hmm. Well, but he doesn't even offer a medical kit, so that doesn't matter. So I guess I'll just take food. Food in exchange for um, the fishing pole. And that's it. There's no one else to talk to. We traded with everyone. And now we're going to bail. Uh, once again, the short route's going to be more dangerous. The long route will use up more supplies. I don't think I have as many supplies as I should, so I'll, I'll risk the short route. Do you know why mariachi bands are important to the revolution? Mariachi, I saw that somewhere. There it is. They often help celebrate the great moments in the lives of the Mexican people. Uh, what do they sing about? They celebrate uh, love, machismo, death, yada yada. I'm guessing they sing about the revolution. Yes. When you send word, you write a letter. In Mexico, when mariachis sing, they bring news of the revolution home to our families. Well, okay then. Uh, yep, there we go. Sure enough, there was another shooting sequence. We've seen this one, I think, twice now. This is number three of the same exact environment. Oh. Come on, you need one more shot for this guy. I'm sure all those mouse clicks are lovely to hear. Uh, this one again, it's gonna be one right here. Oh, he's dead already, sweet. All right, so we made it to Claw's hideout. We're, gra uh, we're grabbing up all the weapons and explosives. Now what? Well. We had some casualties in this battle. Do you know who is now fighting at Pershing's side? So yeah, again, Indy, 17-year-old, he's just decided to roll up with the Mexican revolutionaries and fight all sorts of people. But now there's something about somebody fighting along with Pershing. Who is that? Oh, <clears throat> my bad. I didn't mean to leave yet. No, no, that's not it either. Yeah, Patton was in was Pershing's aide in the fight against the Mexican revolutionists. So, the answer is George S. Patton. His recklessness with words is matched by his talents as a marksman. And do you know what his favorite weapon is? Oh, that would have been in the same place, I think. Two pages for Patton, or three pages. He used a Colt 45 Peacemaker. That's right, a pistol himself, and his favorite gun is a Peacemaker. Aha, uh -huh. I think he's saying, isn't that a funny joke? Running low on water. I don't even know what that means. Like when those messages pop up, like, what is low? Is it one more water, two more water? No prenda la mecha hasta que estés arriba del muro. 
Per ordine generale, la via non llega sufficientemente cerca del muro. Non worry. Il Aguilera è il mio paese, ho cresciuto lì. Guarda, c'è una spur line che va right up to the wall. I was fishing the tracks, and you go crashing right into it. <laughs> Cuando derrimemos nosotros el muro, la ciudad será nuestra. Sí, Miguel Acab. Eh, ahora muchachos, rápido. Órale, vámonos. Uh, I do understand Spanish, and yeah, Remy's Spanish there was a little, little rough. I don't know that I could understand it. Uh, but they did. Vio was, was, was down for whatever he was saying, so it's fine. Here's a fun little mini game. So we're trying to get this train to crash through a wall, but first we have to do some rewiring to get things started. So let's do it. And you know you're done when you light up all the light bulbs. And there we go. And we did it. Crash, kaboom, kaboom, crash, crash. It worked and they get to march in there. a lot of planes. The illustrations of Indy are so much more like, uh, well, blonde for some reason, but also very chiseled. All right, more shooting. I don't recall, there, well, there's one. Oh, he got me. That's one, that's one shot. Oh. All right, he's dead. Oh, two hits. I should be ducking a lot more, but I have... <laughs> Whoops. I lost that one. And, and again, it really just means that I, I, I took some damage, which should be healed up immediately so that we don't die on the road. Uh, and oof, no more... F I have... I can't use this food because I need it for the, for the journeys. Um... I think I can maybe use a healing herb. Oh, that does work. All right. That's good. Dang. Gut shot, too. I hear that's not a very pleasant way to slowly die. And now we're back at the camp. And again, we have a lot of money, but there's no shop here, so even though I need supplies, I can't do anything about it. Let me just take a look around. Uh, nope. Not gonna, not gonna gamble. Hello. Come, my friend, let us eat. Sure. Come, my friend, let us eat. I would expect that to mean I'm going to get healed because we're going to eat food, but no nothing. Come, my friend, let us eat. Uh, no, I don't want to play cards. Come, my friend, let us eat. So what's your story? I was a sailor but hated the sea, so I jumped ship. I met Lupe where we had docked in Veracruz. 
We were very happy. Then the Federales came and killed my Lupe. And voila, I joined the revolution. Okay. Do you know what Pancho Villa did before he became Pancho Villa? Let's find out. Uh, Pancho Villa, where are you? He was a poor shark robber. Yes, he worked on a hacienda until he shot the hacendado for taking advantage of his sister. He then joined a group of banditos, and when their leader died, he took the name Pancho Francisco Villa as his own. All right, let's trade. What do you got? But I, I know I need food. We're real low on that. So daily food rations, but what am I going to give him? The bullwhip? I guess. All right, what does that put us? That puts us at two water, 2.25 food. And that's it. I, I cannot trade any of these items. They're, they're all kind of essential, so. Uh, Because there's one more trading opportunity with Via, Pancho Via, but I think I'm not going to trade anything because I need all this stuff. Do you see what is in my fist? This is what we are really fighting for. To own a piece of our own land, to raise crops and feed our children. This is our revolution. A pitiful handful of dirt. Go home, boy. We don't need you. Go home to your rich, fat, Country, go home. I set you free. Thanks, bud. So here, I think in the show, I believe he says, "No, I want to fight with you." But like, like I did earlier on, though, I'm gonna deviate from the, what the TV show does and say, "All right, I'm out of here." Every horse has a rider, and I can spare none that will not fight. But you can come along with us to Ciudad Guerrero. There is a train there you can catch. Isn't that the town we just attacked? And he wants to go back there? Do you know which war Hearst made up sensational stories about to increase his daily circulation? Hearst. Somebody we have not heard about at all, but now he's asking us to go learn about Hearst. So, uh, you would think the answer is in here, and it kind of is. Because you read about Hearst, and you read about his yellow journalism. So then if you go read about yellow journalism, you find out that he wrote about the Mexican uh, folks in politics. So, a pretty good guess is Mexican Revolution. Hearst few suspicions that the Spanish sank the U.S. ship Maine and demanded revenge in his sensational headlines. Soon after, the Spanish-American War began. Now, he is using his yellow paper empire to bully Woodrow Wilson and the U.S. into taking over Mexico. Oh, wait, was the answer Spanish-American War? Oh, I think I didn't get a card there because I goofed. Yeah, yeah, I think I made a mistake there. Then I'm not going to get a card. Oh, well. So, let's just see what he has to offer. Uh, yeah, the usual stuff. But, uh, like I said, why can't I trade money? Why can't I just give him my, you know, five bucks for oh, some of the stuff I need? And again, I have a bunch of stuff, or I have a few things, but I need them all, so we're going to say no. That's it. And then this rando's uh, gone. I think that was the guy who got killed. Or who got gut shot. Wilson Wilson is peor que Carranza. Carranza le está dando a México a él. Vamos a ver sus pinches gringos donde más les duela. Mañana atacamos la hacienda de William Randall Hearst. Por mi general, tendremos una guerra en los Estados Unidos. Precisamente lo que queremos, para que atrapen la carranza en el medio. No, some acting on that person's part. Mi general, queremos guerra con los Estados Unidos. Which, again, again, because I understand Spanish, I, I think it's maybe a bit funnier to me than uh, someone who doesn't know what he's saying. Alright, so, once again, I think the desert route will be worse for our resources, so let's take the mountain route. Uh, let's hope the herbs do something. And they did. 
Is this the last stop? I think so. Yeah, I, I took a hit here, but I, I believe this is the last stop of the game. And there it is. Oof, that, that face. I think only a mother would love that face. All right. So exit, this is the end of the game, but before we do that, let's go here. Adios, adios mi amor. It's nice that they had a piano player to accompany the, the film. Here's Remy for one last chat. Let's see what he's up to. What is it, Indiana? Are you sick? Oh, he's just having second thoughts, man. It's not my revolution either. Oh. So far, there have been four different presidents since the revolution began. Do you know which was the first to be overthrown? Yeah, yeah. Who, who kicked off this whole... Uh, presidential musical chairs thing. Looks like Diaz. Yeah, Diaz was the first one. You are a fast learner. That's right. After a rigged election, Villa helped establish Diaz's rival, Madera, as president. But then Huerta seized power. Then Carranza overthrew Huerta. Jeez. Oh, that's it. Before you go, though, I must ask one last favor. Can you answer why your president would support Carranza? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Is there anything about Carranza here? There is not. And there's nothing about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, either. Uh, let me see. Hmm. So the U.S. recognized Carranza. The U.S., they support Carranza. I mean, based on what I'm seeing, I think this president supports Carranza because he won't cause problems. A single battle does not settle things in Mexico. Sure. Muchos años cabalgué con Juárez en contra del emperador Maximiliano. En esa época perdí muchas gallinas, pero yo creí que valía la pena ser libre. Cuando don Porfirio subió a presidente, lo apoyé, pero se llevó las gallinas. Vino Huerta y se llevó las gallinas. Le tocó el turno a Carranza y también se llevó las gallinas. Ahora viene Pancho Villa a liberarme y lo primero que hizo fue robarme las gallinas. 
Luisito necesita comida. Quiere ayudarle. ¿Ayudarme? ¿Ayudarle? También va a ayudarme, Carranza. Y todos los demás. ¿Qué diferencia hay entre uno y otro? Mis gallinas no lo saben. En el mundo entero, las revoluciones vienen y van. Los presidentes suben y caen. Todos roban tus gallinas. Lo único que cambia es el nombre de quien se llevó la gallina. A little uh, schooling for all Indy on politics and economics. And yeah, they always you know take your checkers. Porfirio Diaz did before he became a politician? I say it's a matter of uh, a play, trying to live somewhere where they take as few of your chickens as possible, right? So they let you live there, but they're going to take a certain percentage of your chickens uh, in exchange for that, that right to live there. Anyway, uh, what, did, what did Diaz do before uh, whatever? All right, what did he do? Um, this one? Yeah, this one's weird because the article about him doesn't say what he did. You have to read about that somewhere else. Or in some other article. And I just have to find out which one. Uh, no, it's not that one. Nope. Hmm. Where am I going to read about this? Hold on, we're gonna we gotta figure this out. Chihuahua is just a state in Mexico. Guerrero is a city. Hacienda that was the system they used for uh, land control of the land. Mexico, there's nothing about Diaz here either. There's something about Diaz. All right, Madero was the one who replaced Diaz. And then who's this guy, Gonzalez? Ah, uh, he was one of the leaders. All right, but yeah, Gonzalez is not the one we're looking for. All right, well, I, I don't see the answer, but I know that it's uh, shoes. Yes, he probably helped more people making shoes than all the laws he passed in his 30 years. Poor people need shoes, food to eat, a decent place to live and raise a family. Promises are a luxury of the wealthy. That's it. Here's a little wrap up. For us, uh, so in 1920, Villa became, he stopped fighting and ended his part of the Civil War. He was awarded a hacienda for himself in his hometown and his men received land and money. He founded a bank to give low interest, lo low interest loans to farmers and built schools. He was a folk hero and a champion of the poor compared to Robin Hood. But, on July 20th, 23, he got shot. And then later, they cut his head off of his corpse. Jeez. All right, Pershing, what about this guy? In April of 1917, they declared war on Germany. After he led the punitive expedition to Mexico, he was called in to build up the U.S. Army from 25k to 2 million. Jeez. He was promoted to commander-in-chief, and he led the American Expeditionary Forces in France. They created the rank of General of the Armies, so he was the highest-ranking dude ever. He became Chief of Staff for a while, and then he retired at the age of 64. Hearst, again, Hearst, somebody who didn't have anything to do with the story of this game. They decided, like, let's learn about him. 
So yeah, he was a newspaper guy. He built up a whole empire, media empire. He was in Congress, but he could not get himself elected mayor of New York. He owned a bunch of names we know, a film company, and a whole bunch of land. He also built a giant castle that was never finished because he kept building and tearing it down. And I've been there. It's a pretty wild place. It's, now it's just a tourist attraction. Uh, this is surprising to me. They, he, his company still exists. I don't know what they do, but they're still around. All right, what about the revolution? <clears throat> Diaz ruled from 76 to 1910, and then he got kicked out. Uh, Zapata and Villa were two of the leaders in the revolution. Zapata in the, in the south and Villa in the north. And 1917 was the end of the revolution, officially. And that was when they changed the constitution to give worker rights under the law. And there we go. We reached the end. We collected 18 cards. Here's some of the bonuses you get if you collect more than 10 cards. It's just some... Some sheets you could print out in color if you like. Uh, and we have some cards like I showed you earlier. 18. I think this is the closest I've gotten to 20. I've never gotten 20 in any of these games, but uh, this is pretty close. But yeah, but, but every time I also am left wondering, like, what did I miss? I have no idea. But uh, there's a diary which I, I hadn't been reading at all. Uh, which, yeah, that just goes into some detail about uh, the background, which we don't need to read here, because we're done. Yeah, there, there you go. Officially produced by LucasArts. So I, what I see happening here is that Lucas, George Lucas, was like, hey, we're going to put our TV series uh, on DVD. We want to make some games for it. Since I own a video game company, uh, I want them to do these games. Because this feels like I don't know. To me, this just feels like some extra work for somebody. <laughs> like, right? They didn't develop it, but they were they were tasked with having to to make this these games for these DVD sets, and obviously it got contracted out. Yeah, I, I don't think I said that before. It was developed by. Uh, we'll, we'll find out in a moment. Actually, you always have to think George Lucas because he did create all this. Oh, the companies anyway. But here we go. Yeah, the developers were River Deep and Asylum Entertainment, I believe. Uh, and I'm guessing that means, like, one of them was doing most of the engineering, one of them was doing the um, art, maybe. You can see they even had the instructional design team, I guess, working on all the historical, informative bits. Actually, it looks like they weren't really doing engineering. They were maybe a production company, and Asylum Entertainment would have been the company that was doing the development and the art. Yeah, developed in Flash. Like, I, I don't know, like th thinking back to 2007, 2008, I guess Flash would have still been viable, but I don't think it was that popular as a development platform anymore. So seeing that they use Flash for this um, is surprising. But, it, but it's good for this kind of game though, right? It's a very simple game, so maybe they just looked at it and thought this would be the cheapest, most effective way to, to uh, accomplish the task here. Uh, but that's it for the Indiana Jones Adventures of Young Indiana Jones colon Revolution. Uh, but it, but yeah, there's two more, so I'll be back with those. And until then, see ya. Adios, adios, mi amor. Vaya con Dios, mi amor.